Years ago, when I made the switch to becoming a full-time Chromebook user, I had to find all kinds of loopholes to stay productive on my device to get my job done. And back then, my job had nothing to do with writing articles. It had everything to do with building websites and being a front-end web designer. These days, my work tasks are quite a bit different. I do spend still a lot of time building and maintaining our website, but I spend the majority of my time writing. And part of that production process means I need to be able to deal with photos and edit graphics and make sure that all our stuff looks consistent across the board. And it's now easier than ever to do those types of tasks on a Chromebook. And I wanna show you three of the tools that I use on a daily basis, literally every single day to get that done. Today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of users because they're awesome at what they do, keeping your browsing safe and secure whether you're at home or out and about and on the go. If you'd like to learn more about their services, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN to learn more and get started today. The first app I want to talk about is basically an experiment that Google did whenever they were talking about how to use progressive web apps and how to build them at I.O. either last year or the year before. Regardless, it has become indispensable to everybody at the Chrome Unbox team. It's called Squoosh, uh, S-Q-U-O-O-S-H. And it is an app that is, again, built on the web that allows you to resize and compress images. And I can't tell you how useful this thing is. Literally every time we put up a post, or we put up a YouTube video, I am using Squoosh to bring down the size of our overall images. If you know anything about web development or if you've messed with YouTube at all, you know when you start uploading photos, you wanna make sure that they are small in size. And that I'm not talking about pixel density, I'm talking about the file size. And sometimes it just depends on the, the picture, how many colors are going on and how much shadow there is and all those kind of things. You can have a photo that you don't think is a big deal and it's one or two megs. And while that doesn't sound massive, when you start layering those on top of one another on a website, it really decreases the load time. And I don't think YouTube will allow an upload for a thumbnail of more than two megabytes. So you really have to figure out how it is you're gonna keep your picture size down and Squoosh is an awesome tool for this. We load the image in, you decide what percentage you want to compress the image in, and it's almost like magic in the background. It has a slider that you can see on both sides what your image looked like before and what it looks like after. You can see exactly how big the image is and when you are satisfied with what you've got and after you've resized and all that kind of stuff, hit download, you have your new compressed image that almost always looks as good as the original and it's way smaller and it's much better for web use. So if you'd like to learn more about that app, you can head over to Squoosh. Again, it's S-Q-U-O-O-S-H dot app, A-P-P, -P, and you can use it on the web. There's nothing to install, it's a web app. You know, this is a Chromebook. That's the awesomeness of all this stuff. So any device you can get on the web with, you can go to squoosh.app and start using that right now. The second app I wanna talk about is one called Gravit Designer. It's G-R-A-V-I-T Designer. It seems like all these have weird names, but this one is a service that was bought up by Corel not too long ago, but Gravit has been around for a few years, and it's one of those indispensable tools that I wish deeply was around when I first started using Chromebooks. I used to have to jump through all these hoops and get Linux going so that I could have Inkscape so that I could do vector stuff. And if you've ever messed with graphics, you know the difference between vector art and you know pixels and dealing with photos. If you really need to build graphics, you need some sort of vector editor. And used to that just wasn't a thing online, but now there's quite a few. And by far and away, Gravit Designer is the best version of this. And it has almost every tool that you need. It's not to say that there's not a learning curve just like any other piece of software, but I've found over the last few years, I've transitioned everything I do on a graphic basis over to Gravit. I do everything from a graphic perspective from this app. And back when I was doing web development, on a full-time basis, I had to do graphic stuff a lot, deal with logos, build logos, make different graphics for websites. It can handle all of it. It can handle all sorts of things. I've done signage with it. I've done print media with it. And for Chrome Unboxed on a daily basis, I deal again with thumbnails for YouTube and, and featured images for the website and graphics for the website. And it is an indispensable tool. And if you're looking for something that's robust, easy to use and easy to start up with. And you don't, again, you don't need to really download anything. You can use it right on the web. 
It's just gravit.io. It's called Gravit Designer. You can check them out online and I highly recommend it. The third and final app I wanna talk about is one that you're probably familiar with and if you're not, you need to be using it. It's Google Photos. And specifically, I'm talking about the web version of Google Photos because when you're on a Chromebook, Sure, you can put the Android app on here if you want to, and it works just fine and exactly like you would expect it to. But again, the web version is lighter, it's easier to get to, and if I don't have it installed or I don't have it pinned to my taskbar or something like that, you just go to photos.google.com and boom, there's your interface, change the account to the one you need, and you can jump in to photos that, for me, that I've literally just taken on my phone. By the time I get to photos.google.com, they're already uploaded. And what I use it for primarily is either cropping and getting a, you know, a shot just right that we've taken for, again, a, a thumbnail or a featured image, but mainly it's for the auto color correction. And if you know anything about Google and image processing, I mean, their Pixel phones are amazing, not because they have the best hardware, but because they have all kinds of AI and machine learning that makes their images look awesome. And so, any image you take and upload to Google Photos, you can go in and start messing with all the color science on it, or you can just hit the auto button that's there and kind of allow Google to do the thing that Google's really good at and make your photo just look better. I would say seven times out of 10, I run my photos through that, hit auto, and just kind of just see where I get. And if I wanna make some slight adjustments, I can, but most times Google does an awesome job at fixing my photo for me, making it look a lot more eye-catching, and then I can take it and I can squoosh it and I can take it into Gravit Designer and add some graphics to it and then upload it as a nice sized file that works for the web or works for YouTube. And it's just an indispensable tool. So that's it. Those are the three apps I probably use most on my Chromebook on a daily basis. That's not to say those are the only things I use, the only web services, the only apps I install. That's not true. Obviously, I use lots of stuff. But if we're talking the things I use literally on a daily basis every time I sit down at my Chromebook, those three are the top of the list for sure. And so if you're looking for something to do some basic photo editing, some basic graphic editing, and some stuff that you can actually produce pro-level stuff and get pro-level results, those are three apps I think you would do well to go ahead, find, install, and start using today. But guys, that's been it for this one. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Go down there and hit the subscribe button. And make sure and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos like this one. And finally, hit the join button down there and you can see all the perks that our members get. Things like custom emojis and behind the scenes footage. Until next time, we'll see you.